In this video, we're going to learn how to find the prime factorization of a number. So let's read the directions. Find the prime factorizations for the given number using factor trees. Write the final result in both exponential form and factored form. Okay, so the fundamental theorem of arithmetic tells us that every number can be factored into prime factors. Okay. and also that there's exactly one way to do it. Our answer is unique. So let's start with 12 and see how we can use a factor tree to find this prime factorization. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with 12 and draw two little branches and think of any way that any two numbers that multiply to equal 12. First thing that comes to mind to me is 2 times 6 equals 12. Okay. When you get a number that's prime, like 2, you're going to circle it because it cannot be factored any further. When you have a number that's not prime, you're going to keep factoring until you get all primes. So 6 is 2 times 3. Both 2 and 3 are prime, so I'm going to circle them. And then these three numbers their product is called the prime factorization of 12. So in factored form, write your numbers from least to greatest. So we have one factor of two, two factors of two times three. And in exponential form, we would write two factors of two as two squared. And there's just one factor of three. So it's three to the first, but we just leave it as three, <coughs> okay? Just to verify in this one case that um, we get the same result no matter how we factored, let's try a different way of factoring 12, maybe 3 times 4. Okay. So I started differently than 2 times 6. 3 is prime, and 4 is 2 times 2, both of which that are, are prime. So notice the numbers in the tree are in different places. But our final result of 1 factor of 3 and 2 factors of 2 is the same. Okay? So this doesn't prove it, but I just wanted to show you this is the case. It doesn't matter how you start. Um, as long as you factor correctly, you will always get the same result. Let's look at 75. Okay? So a good place to start is to try to think of any factor of the number. And here, when a number is even, I usually start with 2 unless I could think of another factor. And since 75 ends in 5, I might want to start with 5. Or another factor pair of 75 I know well from money is 25 times 3. So 3 quarters is 75 cents. You can start either way. I'm going to do 25 times 3. Now 3 is prime, so I'm going to circle it. 25 is not prime, so I keep factoring it. It is equal to 5 times 5. 5, however, is prime. So here are our three prime numbers whose product equals 75. Writing them in increasing order, we have 3 times 5 times 5. Or in exponential form, this is 3 times 2 factors of 5, which is 5 squared. Now let's look at 155, okay? It's not even, but it ends in a 5, so I know it's divisible by 5. So I'm going to start with a 5, and maybe you know the other number it's divisible by, but if you want, you can always do it on the calculator, or using long division, 155 divided by 5 is 31. So. 5 is prime. Now what about 31? So you may think of your multiplication tables. Can you think of any two numbers that multiply to 31? Um, so one way we can always check to see if it has any other prime factors is remember since it's less than, let's see, 49, we only have to check 2, 3, and 5. It's not divisible by 2 because it ends in a 1. It's not divisible by 5 because it doesn't end in 0 or 5. It's also not divisible by 3. I know that because it would go in 10 times with the remainder. 
because I know 3 times 10 is 30, but you can always check it if you'd like. Okay. Notice there's a remainder. So that means 31 is actually prime, so we can circle it. And this is 155's prime factorization. So we have 5 times 31. The exponential form will be identical because since there aren't any repeated factors, we wouldn't write anything with an exponent greater than 1, which we usually omit and don't write at all.